At some point during that second season, I began to hear from NBC very strenuously about getting Jerry and, and Elaine together. I was beating the drum saying their relationship, when, when they're together, when there are real stakes in their relationship, I believe that that is something that the audience can attach themselves to. They kept persisting and I was very, very reluctant and resistant and I wasn't doing it. And then I remembered something from my life that I thought would make a really funny show even if they had never said that to me. And once I, once I remembered that, that incident from my past in which, <laughs> I'm sorry to say, I did try and work out a deal where I could actually have this, <laughs> this uh, physical uh, relationship with someone and, and yet not have it get to the point where we were boyfriend and girlfriend. And the only way we could do that was if, I, was if we followed these particular rules. And uh, that became uh, the deal episode. I mean, if anything happened and we couldn't be friends the way we are now, that would really be bad. Devastating. Because this is very good. <laughs> and that would be good. That would be good, too. <laughs> The idea is to combine the this and the that. But this cannot be disturbed. Yeah, we, 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 we just want to take this and add that. I remember the deal. They had that great opening scene about the this, that, and the other. I, I still, to this day, consider that the best scene ever in the history of the show, and that's my favorite episode in the history of the show. I love the deal episode, and I remember a lot of shouting that week. Larry and Andy Scheinman got into a lot of yelling matches on the set about how to end that episode, and also about how to play the scene in which Jerry and I make the deal on the couch about what the rules are going to be about uh, sleeping together and then remaining friends somehow. For example, <laughs> now I call you whenever I'm inclined and vice versa. Right. But if we did that, we might feel a certain obligation to call. Uh, well, why should that be? Oh, I have an idea. I have an idea. No calls the day after that. Beautiful. <laughs> Let's make it a rule. All right, sir. I, during the week, was playing it very sexually. Um, and, you know, it's funny because if you read that on the page, you can see that that would be a choice someone would make. By the way, a bad choice, but a choice. And there was a lot of sort of, I felt like, Castle Rock pressure to make it all sexy and blah, blah, blah. But I didn't understand what Larry was talking about. He kept saying about it as it's not sexual at all. You gotta, you gotta talk about it like, um, like it's a contract, like it's a business, like a, you know, and I didn't understand what he meant. I really didn't. And it was the night before we were gonna shoot, or maybe it was the night, yeah, it was the night before we were gonna shoot, and I came home, and I was talking to um, my husband Brad about it, as I often did, and I was saying, this is what Larry was saying, and I remember very vividly, Brad said, oh no, but of course he's right. And, and Brad sort of explained to me in a way that I could hear, because for some reason I was dense, Larry's point of view, which I immediately understood. And then the next day we went in and we played it like that and that's how it ended up. I slept with Elaine last night. <laughs> oxygen, I need some oxygen. This is major. I thought you'd like that. Oh, this is huge. I know. All right, okay, let's go. Details. No, nah, I can't give details. You what? I can't give details. No details? I'm not in the mood. <laughs> you ask me here to have lunch, tell me you slept with Elaine, and then say you're not in the mood for details. Now, you listen to me. <laughs> I want details, and I want them right now. I don't have a job. I have no place to go. You're not in the mood? Well, you get in the mood! <laughs> he could write that potentially ugly underbelly uh, of human motivation that goes, to hell with you and your, your morality. 
I got nothing going on in my life. I need some dirt. Give me a reason to live. The hell with you. Um, he could, he could not only write it, but he could write it funny. Think where man's glory most begins and ends, and say my glory was I had such a friend. Yates. <laughs> Could you excuse us, please? What? what? We're talking. Oh, the relationship. I do recall the Yates um, quote, and it was it's very apropos for the show, of course, overall. Think of where life begins and ends and say, my glory was I had such a friend. The motto, no hugging, no learning, of course, still applied to the show, but to be able to say something that, that was that tender um, was a great opportunity, and it was a cinch to do because it's a very moving two lines of material, so... I had no problem with it. I loved, I loved it. That was probably the tenderest moment in the history of the series. And uh, I remember feeling uh, very out of my depth at that time. So, uh, what are you guys gonna do today? Um, this and that. And the other. <laughs> well, I really liked the two of you much better when you weren't a couple. <laughs> We thought that people weren't going to believe that these two were just going to continue to hang out. We thought the idea of them just being friends was stretching credibility. And we thought we had to put them back together. And uh, I think we thought that that's what it was going to be. Jerry had been on the road during the hiatus and doing uh, concerts and everything. And the show had been sort of uh, picking up some momentum and a lot. Of, and he would do a question and answer thing. And, and uh, he, he, he would say to the audience, what do you think about uh, me being with Elaine? No! And they would, he came back and said, no, no! And I mean, you know, resoundingly no. So that was, uh, that, was that. 